Now we're going to travel a little north to our Philippines network, where we will learn about some of the sustainable solutions our members there are implementing. Um, this is going to be another about 15 minute long video. And as a reminder for those of you who are just joining us, if you have called in, you unfortunately will not be able to hear the video sound. And then for those of you on your computer, if you can't see the video, just check to make sure it isn't hidden behind another application of your computer. I am going to share with you the sustainable solutions of Mapua. And uh, I can say that this is a holistic approach that we are going. So we have, we created a web page within our website. And um, we name it, we name it Atlas Sustainability. So we put everything there, what we're doing, and how we comply the 17th sustainable development goals. We have programs, we have academic programs that address the SDGs and we put up research centers as well. The programs for our senior high school that um, address SDGs, the 17 SDGs as well. And um, this senior high school is given to research. Even our research agenda are being uh, placed on the platform of SDGs. And the research outputs that we have are being disseminated, <coughs> emphasizing the uh, importance of research and how it provides solutions to societal problems. Our research, our research is are being focused on, um, like for example, this the water quality in Laguna Lake because Laguna Lake is being used for domestic supply, being used for agriculture, being used for energy like that, and for industry. And also, um, we have a couple of projects in focusing in the UK and in, in Morocco, addressing environmental factors and health. So we disseminate those and we wanted to show the society that we are doing research to address societal problems in our country and we are cooperating with international organizations and research uh, universities and institutes to um, develop our research competency as well. Thank you for your attention. For this uh, session, I am presenting uh, two solutions. So the, the project is called Smart and Sustainable Transport Project for Philippine Cities. The first project, which I'm discussing now, aims to address limited data availability, expensive data gathering enhanced transport planning capacities of LGUs in development agencies through the development of software tools for data gathering and analysis. This is a joint project of four higher education institutions in the country and a collaboration of uh, multidisciplinary uh, expertise. How is the community involved? The output of the project relies on a successful partnership between the local government unit, local partner university, and the main coordinating institution, which is the Rasal University. Partner universities are tapped to carry out the household surveys needed to build the database. Their faculty and students are trained to conduct the research. On the other hand, our GUs are tapped to facilitate uh, to conduct the surveys as they are also involved in the planning phase of the project. The innovation here is really the what we call knowledge partnerships between universities and their in the local government units. The idea is in the era of sustainable development goals, the knowledge development and solutions development should be a collective action that requires uh, collaboration, wherein local knowledge and technical knowledge, theoretical knowledge of uh, are equally important in uh, development solutions. The tool seeks to empower LGUs with regard to how they plan and evaluate new transport infrastructure and policy projects. If the LGU is looking to propose a new infrastructure and policy project to improve transportation quality in their city, they can begin by plotting various transport indicators on the map. Uh, through this, they can determine which specific areas of the city need interventions and what kind of interventions are needed. On the other hand, if a 
uh, the private sector propose a new transportation infrastructure policy project with the LGU. The LGU can use the same tool to assess the potential impact of the project through our interactive interface. It also aims to provide data analytics and smart features to the LGU by determining the top and worst scoring indicators in the city and suggesting potential new process of these issues. This makes it easier for the LGU to know what we should solve and how to act. Second project is about development of this smart electric GP system, uh, an EGP management system. This project is in support of the Complicated EGP Modernization Initiative. The impact of this project encompasses passengers, drivers, and even uh, fleet managers. The fleet management system ensures the efficient and timely deployment of EGPs by monitoring real time passenger count on board the GPs and terminals. The passenger facing app gives estimated arrival times of jeepneys at the designated terminals and real time passenger counts at each jeepney. Thank you very much. The today we have a multidisciplinary research project on all the coastal cities at risk on investing in climate and disaster resilience. The objective of the project is to enhance the capacities of coastal cities to analyze and understand the complexity of this. So, Many government agencies, including local government units, you know, uh, try to address the problems, many sustainable development problems in terms of silos. So one of the objectives still also of the project is try to increase the understanding of how all of these complex uh, problems you know, actually come together. And eventually also to identify pathways towards resilience to evidence in form of the same partnership. So one of the objectives of the plan you know, program is to develop uh, evidence in form uh, resilience plans you know, for a specific city. So the illustration actually here just shows you the relationship and the processual flow of trying to generate knowledge on climate and disaster risk. So these are the three main project components that we're undertaking. So one is to collect and analyze data of extreme weather events in these four different cities. And second also is to examine certain bi biophysical impacts of climate and extreme events. So what are the health and physical impacts now, or immediate impacts of disasters. A second also important component, so in the middle, is actually to develop resilience models to help uh, these local government units look at uh, disasters as a say, systems dynamics um, in terms of a system. No? And then also to enhance also the visualization and analysis and communication of these locations. But at the same time, this uh, project also aims to um, try to develop new thought leaders also in disaster resilience. So there is a master's in disaster risk and resilience program that is also associated with the project. So many of our research teams actually coordinate with some students no, who are also doing research no, in their master's. And also we coordinate with the private sector to the uh, National um, Resilience Council. So some of our research outputs include uh, the development of practice and research briefs which can send to the policymakers at the local government level. Some of us are working also on journal articles to identify causes and impacts of disasters at the city level. The institutional outputs that we want uh, these local government units to have after the project is that uh, we hope that uh, they have a science-based city disaster resilient plan. A resilient suite of systems thinking tools that we want to leave with them. and. Uh, uh, an, eco an economic model that tries to analyze the impact of, um, of disasters no, on business, uh, geospatial data on impacts on infrastructures, and hopefully we also have some trainees or interns at the local government level who can analyze all of this. Uh, this. Thank you very much. Actually, my main personality is Alianza Rehuda. I spent full time two years getting all the farmers and fish brought together called Alianza de Water. And we have 32 federations and organizations from the people who march from Davao to Manila asking for the levy uh, to the people involved in swine food, right? All of them. And the instruction is, what is the solution, right? Goal number one, no poverty. And goal number two, clean water energy. But I'd like to say that what interests me in this thing is that I've been hearing all these solutions today and I was asked the same question. No? Are they using your solutions, right? And you know, the delay is us. You are the ones to provide the information with the users. We don't know the answers. And so the farmers want to know the answers. 
but you have to ask us what is our question. But the main thing I want to communicate is this, right? No poverty. What we did actually since we left is our alliance, which is farmers, we got agribusiness, okay? They know how to process without causing with nothing. We have science, the professors, UPLB. What was given you by Brother Armin, that UPLB. I managed that thing, seven books I have. The second one is this water catchment. We get 4% and India gets 60%. Now, what's sustainable? I mean, they talk about this all the time. This network must now show why our group, our government, gets 4% despite all the others. And the last slide is FBI, this thing. In Europe, they do sustainable reporting. Why is that important for this network? I mean, we, this network has got the credibility in the United States, it's got the people, got the brilliant guys like Armin, etc. And this thing, instead of getting distracted, right? If this network concentrates on this, right? And finds out who's screwed up and what they can do, this is it. Why am I excited? I'm excited because this marks the beginning of something very important. We began three years ago. Now they can get someone from the good school called Ateneo. We're gonna give it time and focus. And for me, I'm the CSO, right? Is we business CSO. We want to get from the network what other people do not give. For example, helping farmers, for God's sake. I'm not interested in your helping farmers, we do that. But you can help farmers in a way that's not happening, not sustainable, that's it. And you gotta tell all the people, right? Irrigation, etc. We know the answer, kulam, kulam. So in summary, my doctorate is called the transfer of training into the real world or the transfer of the, this network's knowledge which you will assemble and crystallize and give it to us and we are the ones who are going to get it. And I'm looking forward to working with you guys on this and what I've seen is great. And the last thing I'm going to say is this, right? Uh, this, uh, I asked the question, do they understand it, right? Because in the long run, we understand it. So I want this network to get something that will understand and we can use. Thank you very much. This is a coalition that seeks to address the, the core issue of water. We have, uh, the Philippines is a lot of water, but the, the real problem actually is uh, the water that we have may, may, may not be the quality water that, uh, we, uh, that our population would need. But behind all of these issues is something structural. And, and that is, if you try looking at the different agencies in the Philippines uh, that's uh, water related, they compete with each other. And, and that's part of, of the big problem. There is already a water shortage. Um, the bad news is it will be worse. No government, no, no agency will declare the urgency of this crisis. Uh, and, and, and I think part of uh, uh, the role of the Water Alliance is to actually get a group to name the problem because the solution actually is around the corner. And our role in partnership with the many other groups, including ASIA, is to actually bring to fore the issues and help people to work together. There are four main areas um, there is a, 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 a cluster of group, a group, uh, we call it group one, that works on, on providing water for waterless communities. Mostly volunteer work, working with the barangay or the LGU, uh, maybe pipes, water source, uh, and preceded with an actual study of, of the water source. Second group, uh, work with companies themselves especially those that have a lot of, of use for water uh, and, and help them track their water footprint and obviously to work towards reduction. The third group are the, is the advocacy group. Uh, uh, they lobby with Congress, with LGUs uh, and the national agencies for issues that will uh, 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 about policy on water. And then lastly, uh, this is where the universities come together. There are many maps in the Philippines and, and, and data sets, but you need uh, uh, several data sets uh, uh, pulled together to be able to understand the issue of water. Try bringing two groups 
to uh, intersect and, and allow the data to speak for itself. Uh, and the, the, the work of the Water Alliance is to actually uh, bring together the group and then curate it so it becomes easily uh, usable by those who will implement policy and those who will actually work on the project. Uh, so we invite you, uh, please join us. I am sure you will be happy to work on uh, a water solution. Now that is just one of the many solutions forum uh, that SDSN has been putting on across our networks uh, to showcase all of the sustainable solutions of our 1200 plus members. Um, so keep an eye out for a solutions forum uh, around your local network.